Hey everyone, I'm Mark Sargent and this is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 86 where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Let's get right to it. First one is called, the only reason to prove SpaceX is fake must read on or off air. Mark, a light bulb just went off in my head. The only reason why it's fake is Elon Musk himself because he has more than enough money to launch himself into space. A seat only costs about 20 million. You would think anyone with that kind of money to spend would jump at the opportunity to launch himself into space. Elon Musk is also fit enough for the flight around the Earth, so why does he not just spend the 20 million? He's worth 20 billion. Does it not make any sense, specifically since he owns his own rocket company? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And this letter was written before the new uh, SpaceX moon mission was brought back just, just recently. And so where now he's taking a Japanese guy to the moon and back, but it's not going to be for five years, which means it's never going to happen. They're going to kick that can down the road. They have no rocket system. And the Japanese guy was under the impression he's going to take eight people with him, which means you're not using a capsule. You're using a space shuttle, which means you're using technology that's never been used for that purpose ever, never even been faked for that purpose. The space shuttles, as you know, which we don't even use anymore, uh, were supposedly only used in low Earth orbit, and now you're going to take them around the moon and back. Uh-huh. And you're going to do this in five years. I thought the initial timeline from last year was aggressive. This is just ridiculous. So, anyway. Yeah. Good one. Thank you for that. This one's called... No subject. Sorry, Mark. I made some spelling and... <laughs> dramatic errors you mean grammatic errors nice that's awesome i'm gonna steal that uh here's the correction grammatic dramatic that's awesome i don't even know if he did that deliberately uh please disregard previous email on august 23rd in rockland county new york i noticed the crescent moon and sun on the same view in the sky i've seen this before but what got my attention was the moon explaining the moon phasing always eluded me but when i went on the internet and looked up pictures of the moon i noticed this the crater appeared to be folding inward. It appears as if the moon was folding itself like a Chips Ahoy cracker. Okay. I, I okay. See pictures below. Perhaps that's why we see stars on the empty side when the moon is full. It begins to fold slowly till it flips all the way to the other side of the coin, which is identical to the other side because the moon is transparent. It's like a transparent coin with both sides identical. Just a thought. Please share. That's from Boss Drax. I think his name is Jude. That is my. This one's called 12 Pictures. Hi, Mark. Love your work. Keep it coming. Can you please send me the 12 pictures you talked about in your Strange World 159? Thanks so much, David. I'll be reading those faster because I know I have more of those. This one's also called 12 Conversion Pictures. Hi, Mark. Thank you so much for taking the time out to email me these pics. It's much appreciated. Cheers, Craig Peter. Very welcome, Craig. This one's called Phone. And let's see, uh, oh, I should probably save this one. Uh, Mar I think the mark of your ability to be a vanguard part of this movement is your capacity to both empathize and provide levity as you deliver the data. Customer service can teach us so much. If life were a book and development of the mind were chapters, you would be far along in that bookmark. Get it? Bookmark. Ah, I see what, there, what you did there. Uh, one might ask, why is the Flat Earth movement arising now? Isn't the Flat Earth an archaic idea? I believe we are entering a period of time where ancient myths once again become reality via evolution of networks. Think about it. Things like passwords, mimetic influence, crystal balls in the form of algorithmic computing probabilities, and of course, the Flat Earth. Many ideas once considered antiquated and simple are proving correct via Occam's razor. You could take it a step further when considering the idea of omniscience and omnipresence being something that is taken for granted prior to Met, Metcalf's law regarding telephones and subsequent networks. The idea of omnipresence or omniscience was reserved for the philosophes pondering God. Yet now with each network in, oh, wow, instant, instantating, 
initiate initiating it's whatever i don't use that word i've never even seen that word initiate i'm gonna say initiating itself within society on higher levels of scale people consider it normal basically i think we're here as a super organism evolving with a counterintuitive purpose and this counterintuitive purpose is being revealed it sucks because if you wanted to discuss things like this with most people it's not received well hence the long email keep kicking butt woody and uh, I actually know this guy. Uh, he he I he worked for me when I did my tech support stuff back in Boulder, Colorado. So I'm gonna have to call him and say thanks, man. I haven't heard from him. I have not seen him in uh, a number of years. All right, this one's called JFK NASA at the X-15 in Dallas. Mark, emergency stop. Made a math error in total weight of the Atlas VI, which affects another calculation. I made the corrections needed, and a new copy is attached. It's titled corrected. Sorry about that, Steve. Okay, I will take a look at that. This one's called Coast to Coast Interviews. Hi, Mark. I've been following you since you started Flat Earth Clues a couple of years ago. Can you please email me the URLs for your Coast to Coast Interviews because I am unable to watch these. Kind regards, and war. And yeah, if you guys want uh, the Coast to Coast Interviews, as you know, I, I can't put them on YouTube because Coast to Coast makes you sign a release form that says you can't put them anywhere. And so I can't, but I do have the audio files on my machine. And I've sent them out to a few people. So if you want them, just email me. Say, I want the Coast to Coast. And I'll shoot them to you through uh, WeTransfer because I think they're about 80 megs each in my email. Most standard emails cap out about 25 megs. So I'd, I'd have to send it through to another thing. But it's easy. It's kind of like Dropbox. But it's even easier than Dropbox. I'm not endorsing it. I'm just saying it's super, super easy. I'm not going to pay for the premium service because I think it's two gigs for free. And if you need more than that, well, then you're probably doing bad things. I don't know. Uh, this one's called No Subject. Mark, thanks for all your do. Uh, here's my license plate. Oh, cool. And it is the um, Mississippi one, which says Flat Earth, F-L-A-T-R-T-H. So if you guys want to do some fun and you want to be, if you're driving around a lot, uh, you just want to represent and you have six, seven, or eight letters to play with, depending on what state you're in or Canadian province then by all means, check it out. You know, there's, I put, you can look and see what's already up there. Type in Flat Earth License Plate Compilation. And I've been doing this now for a couple of years. And, uh, you know, there's, it started out fairly small. I was the first one to, to do it. And now we've got most of the states, most of the continental United States. I do not have Hawaii, which is weird. We, we don't have Hawaii or Alaska, but we do have the Virgin Islands. And we have, I think, half of the Canadian provinces. The northern ones, again, I pretty sure they just use sled dogs so that's kind of fun this one's called flat earth hey mark my name is missel sosa and i am a flat earther i started following you about two years ago i just want to say that i appreciate the knowledge and awareness i enjoyed your epic speech you had at the conference in canada keep up the great work uh, very very welcome if you guys hadn't seen that i now make it my default uh, uh youtube video for my channel when you're already subscribed so if you haven't subscribed you you get kind of a compilation thing of, of license plates and all fast music and stuff but if you already subscribed and you go to the channel it'll start up with that speech that i did at the edmonton conference this one's called just some thoughts hi mark was just wondering i think the moon is just a burned out sun that was replaced long ago as for the ice ring i feel that is a fuel source that keeps this place going you know h2o put electric to it and wow a fuel source just some thoughts as there are more folks that are not indoctrinated looking and thinking about this thank you doug very welcome doug this one's called Flat Water Experiment. Hi, Mark. Please consider this email. Uh, got your email from the channel on YouTube. I have an idea about an experiment to be done to prove water doesn't curve at all. Maybe I am not the first one to think about it, but anyway, I hope it can be implemented. Please reply to me to begin discussing with you. Thanks, Nabil. Okay, again, you guys already know what I'm going to say here, which is don't give me cliffhangers. Don't do it uh don't uh, don't tell me it's like i i've got this great idea and i'll tell you if you write me back it drives sorry it's a pet peeve of mine not my biggest pet peeve but it's a pet peeve that they always do in media in mainstream media in the news uh where they they say we've got five household chemicals that'll kill you dead all you have to do is um sorry i've got to mute something here real fast mute the sounds 
the uh, we'll tell you after you know weather and sports. So it drives me insane when when people do that. So don't give me cliffhangers. Just give me your idea because I get so many emails. Chances are I'm going to skim your email in the, in the first place. So thank you for the email. I appreciate that. Give me your idea. Don't don't hold out on me. This one's called Perception 6 Interview with Sean McCrary. Hello, Mark. My name is Frank from Norway. Love your stuff. I'd like to know more. The video has no audio. Is it something bad on my end or is this a YouTube block? I tried different stuff on it, but I cannot get audio. What gives? Can you help me with this? Thanks in advance. Best regards, Frank. Uh, hopefully he figured this out by now because this is a while ago. Uh, and, and yes, what, what happens is if there is any copyrighted music and it doesn't happen often, but if there's copyrighted music, sometimes well, it won't be blocked in, in the country, but it'll be blocked on some mobile devices, especially if they're overseas. So if you're using like a Samsung galaxy, I'm just giving you an example. If you use like a Samsung galaxy and you're in Norway, for example, you might not be able to hear it because you, you know the YouTube and the copyright things they block certain things on certain mobile it's it's rare but it happens uh, guaranteed you'll be able to watch it uh, and listen to it if you're on a laptop somewhere I, I generally will make sure that it's laptop PC Mac friendly uh, mobile phones eh, and if you're in another country it can get it's sometimes dicey but that's like one of the first emails I've gotten on that in months this one's called Excellent Debate with Paramania Show. That's interview 170. Mark, great debating mixed with friendly discussion. You held your ground nicely. Threatening to walk out on the debate? Absolutely. Why waste time on people who are not debating in good faith and have no interest in learning the facts or observations that FE community is putting out there? Still stuck on ships over the horizon? Someone needs to make a video called Ships Don't Go Over the Horizon, Earth is Flat, and provide footage from their P900 or P1000, complete with GPS coordinates of the camera and the ship. Keep up the great work, Jack. And what he's talking about, by the way, was an interview that I did fairly recently. Uh, interview one, well, at least the posted one I did was 170. I honestly don't know how many interviews I've done. Uh, but the one I posted, uh, there was a guy on there, I believe he was British, and he he hated Flat Earth and he w didn't even look at it. And and I'm I'm he and, and and you could tell that he hadn't even watched any any of my clues or anything like that. And I finally just asked him during the thing. I said, "What what you know? Have you not even looked into?" It? He goes, "No, I don't have to look into it. It's stupid. It's ridiculous." And that's like, oh, "Okay." I go, you know, um, uh, investigation. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, condemnation without investigation is the height of ignorance, right? You know, it's an Einstein quote. I don't know who said it first. Uh, but it's true. And that is, look, look, if you're going to yell the idea, at least have the, the decency to give it a look, you know, just, just stare at it for a minute or two. I mean, that's, that's debate 101. You got to look at who's on the other side of the field, who's on the other side of the chessboard. And he didn't. And so, you know, he it started getting heated. And I said, look, you, you want to keep going? Cause uh, let me know if you want this interview to continue because I was fully prepared. I have not walked out of an interview yet, but I was in that case because it wasn't going to go anywhere. And, you know, then they said, you know, they, anyway, listen to it if you get a chance. It's one of the only times you'll hear me really get a, ticked off. <laughs> I wasn't yelling or anything, but I was going to leave. I, I, I usually get pretty cold. Anyway, let's move on. This one's called Truth? Question mark. Dear Mark, I first started searching out Flat Earth after hearing you on Coast to Coast AM. In my memory, it was late 2014. No, it was mid-2015, but that's close. However, in looking to all the controversy that was related to the first FEIC in North Carolina, which involved ODD TV, it seems that according to the documentation that was actually, yes, actually in 2015, good. I guess my memory of the events to which I came to where I am now is not so important. I have heard all kinds of rumors about you, sir. I've also observed your way in proclaiming the truth. Regardless of my criticism, or lack thereof, the initial seed of my Flat Earth realization came from your mouth. Since the time I heard you on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie, whether it was 2014 or 2015, my whole life has been completely destroyed. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. My friends and family have been put at a distance from me. I lost the job I enjoyed for 13 years. My whole perspective of living in this world has changed. I do not blame you uh, or my realization of Flat Earth res regarding all these changes, yet it seems to have began when I watched your Flat Earth Clues presentation. Truth is a strange thing, indeed. The truth exalts some folks, and they are blessed. The truth also humiliates some folks, and they had, uh, and all they had is stripped from them. And he laughs. Still, though, in the end, the truth remains the truth. Thank you for sharing your perception of the truth with the world. Sincerely yours, William Pyle. 
And uh, yeah, it, it does happen. Look, stats, you know, they vary on what happens. You know, side effects to flat earth include just about anything right now, including, I mean, extreme open-mindedness. And when that happens, the people next to you, you, they don't see you the same way. They look at you and they go, what happened to you? You know, what, why are you different? Why aren't you the person, this normal person that fits into my routine? You don't fit into their routine anymore. And sometimes they'll be like, yeah, I, you're not part of my routine anymore. That's it. Because I can't take this. And you know, I, I'm, I'm somewhat sorry for that. But at the same time, no, because you, you woke up from it. Like, I mean, look, uh, not to use the Matrix line too much, but Neo had a really bad time when he first left the Matrix. You know, it wasn't until the very end. And in the end, he still died. But, I mean, look at look at his first, uh, whatever, it was a couple weeks when he left the Matrix. It was painful. It was awful. This one's called the Stephen Hawkins Conspiracy. Could this be Math Powerland doing the interview? Hi, Mark. I wanted to share something with you, and I want to congratulate you on your wonderful speech at the conference. It was awesome. I don't know if you have ever listened to the interview. Link below. I came up upon it by chance just now it mentions that Stephen Hawkins could have possibly discovered flat earth and was silenced the video is from 2015 as posted on the channel Dr. James yeah, yeah Dr. James was one of the guys that I've never ever talked to him uh, but he posted my flat earth clues the same guy who made your clues into the two hour plus video with 2.8 million views yep and he's not even the biggest also as I was listening it occurred to me that the interviewer's voice sounded familiar can you the interviewer's voice uh, call me crazy, but could this be Matt? If it is not him, oh well. But the information in that video is very interesting. Please let me know what you think. Keep it flat, Alma. Um, the flat earth clues. It was the video. Was the guy who made your Stephen? I I don't know. I don't know. I'll have to look into it. And you didn't. Oh, there is a link. The Stephen Hawkins conspiracy. I will take a look. If I get a chance, I don't think it's Matt, but you know what? I'm gonna take a look. I'm going to drag that to my things to do pile. Yep. This one's called Meteor Showers. Hi, Mark. I've been a flat earther now for about a year, although it took about 10 months of exhaustive research to admit it. So almost two years, if you include that. But this is the first time I've reached out. The one thing I've never found a satisfying answer for is meteors, also known as falling stars. I've witnessed many strange activities in the sky, including black vector-shaped UFOs, stars, lights that appear much brighter, uh, the other stars moving across the sky and then suddenly vanishing. Also, what appeared... Uh, to be like exploding debris falling from the sky and many of these instances have occurred with other witnesses but the lack of curvature and the stationary earth combined with the leveling quality of water still have me convinced that the realm is flat if you could address meteor showers i this just kills me so you you've seen ufos yourself something i would pay real money to see you know up close I would pay more money to see this, and yet meteors, you got a problem with. You can't imagine how meteors could, could happen, even though you're, you're viewing advanced technology that could fully do meteors. I mean, we're only talking about, and, and I'm just going to throw the idea out there, of, of adding a piece of metal ore via railgun technology, which we have, by the way, uh, at speed from a, some sort of platform, and just let the friction of the atmosphere do the rest. Pretty easy. Uh, though I'm lucky enough to have a wife, children, and close friends that all come around to the flat earth meteors, whatever they are, are something that I still find perplexing when it comes to a satisfactory explanation. Thanks for all you do. I don't mind if you use my name as much of my family already thinks I'm crazy. <laughs> crazy is just another word for curiosity. Oh, that's good. I like that. Keep it flat. Peace, Eric. You're very welcome, Eric. This one's called Hi. Literally, it's just called, hi. Hi, Mark. Love your stuff. Keep it going. I keep telling people all the time that the Earth was a ball. It would be curving in all directions at once. It would be sloping basically everywhere. The indoctrination runs deep in these people because they still don't get it. I think the ball belief is the biggest religion in the world. Why do you think people are still in Wonderland? Cheers, Dave. Yeah. Look, I mean, conditioning it takes, it takes some time to bust out of it. No question. This one's called Question. Hi, Mark. I have a few questions for you. Most flat earthers dismiss the theory of gravity and claim that the reason the things are attracted to the earth is because of weight and or density. Not me, necessarily. I, I like gravity because gravity is what we do in simulations. We, we literally create physics engines. We have been for 20 years. Uh, but these are properties of objects, not forces, as opposed to gravity. Objects don't accelerate without a force exerted on them. Yes. So what force is that attracts objects to the earth? Yep, 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 yep. Furthermore, 
if gravity isn't real, how do you explain tides? Absolutely. Yep. You're right on, right on point there. The combination of tides and the fact the objects do have to move down to something. I, you know, on a different note, if the earth is flat uh, and the sun is circling above it, why does it seemingly rise and set? I think everyone who has ever seen a sunset or a sunrise by the ocean can agree that the sun disappears bottom first. Oh boy, here we go. And emerges top first when it rises. Wouldn't there be uh, night everywhere on earth uh, after it sets? In that case, how do you explain that? Sincerely, around earther. Her, his or her name is Franz. And yeah, if you want to look at that, look up, uh, just go to channel DITRH, otherwise known as Deep Inside the Rabbit Hole. He makes fantastic sun videos. A picture is worth a thousand words, and he's got lots of them, uh, lots of video. And, and the point is, is that you can, just like boats, just like boats, now that, you know, the boats go over the horizon, they're gone. You can zoom in on them. They're back. They pop back up. Go figure. Same thing with the sun. The sun appears to set. But it's going through atmospheric lensing. It's going through the Fata Morgana. It's going through atmospheric distortion. When you zoom in, the sun pops back up. And you can, you know, other people say, well, yeah, when you go up on a, on a, a, you know, go up in elevation, the sun pops back up too. And I was going, yeah, but we can do that down at the water level with ju by just zooming in. So what's your point? Either way, the sun's just going off into the distance. It's my opinion. That's what's called Throne of God. Dear Mark Sargent, your videos are interesting and I enjoyed listening to them. I'd like to see the Throne of God paper that you mentioned in your most recent video. I'm always eager to learn more about the earth we live on. Best <laughs> wishes read. And yeah, it was a paper that was, uh, it was during the interview, combination interview with that I had an air traffic controller talk to a flight instructor in the United States and one of them, uh, the air traffic controller, wrote a paper on kind of like a unified theory. Not unified field f theory, but a unified theory. So, and if you want it, you can just say, I want the paper. You can email me and I'll, I'll send it to you. I mean, it's not light reading. You're probably just going to conk out as soon as you watch it or read it. I did. Uh, this one's called FE. Hi, Mark, I believe, and in FE. Two questions. First, concerning Pythagoras. One YouTuber, TigerDan925. Oh, look at TigerDan sighting. Uh, well... Mentioned anyway. He's not really, he's gone. Don't have no idea where he is. He's probably dead. Said the first sentence of the Bible in Hebrew takes numbers of letters and times that by the product of the letters and then divide that by the number of the words times the product of the words you get 3.1416. The value of pi. I'm not going to, yes, okay, if you round up. Uh, so pi is a fingerprint of God. However, another YouTuber said if you add the first 144 numbers of pi, you get 666. 144 is 6 times 6 plus 6 times 6. Therefore, the mark of the beast. Scientists celebrate pi and worship Pythagoras. If pi is God's number and therefore the diameter of the world is infinite, so cannot have measurable boundaries. Or is it Satan's number of the beast? Wow, he's thinking way too much here. He, this is what I would like to call overthinking. But, but we're going to finish this. Uh, or is it God's number Satan stole? Next question. I attended senior science fair today. Senior teacher showed the presentation how God has patterns in creation. She compared the atom with the center surrounded by rings to the heliocentric model, the same design pattern. Also, the Earth has a core surrounded by planets, again, showing the same design as an atom with a center. Same design pattern. Her argument was that the Earth could not be the focus as God does not want to focus on ourselves. Those were three very good arguments. Was the heliocentric model deliberately designed to be in similar pattern to an atom structure? Would love some answers to these questions. Thank you for your time. Blessings, Nicola. Yeah. Um, what do you want me to tell you here? The the atom structure, if that is how it works. Now, you know, are those are, are there protons and electrons being transferred? Sure, why not? Uh, does that mean that the solar system is coincidentally that way? No, it does not. It just means the two are very, very similar in structure. That's all. That's all there is. I mean, I do believe in some coincidence, coincidences, uh, but do I think that the atoms? Again, you got to believe. You got to believe in the atoms thing too, because the whole the whole atom premise uh, is based on uh, almost unobservable technology. We can. We can view some of the stuff and we can we can feel some of the reactions, but we can't see them. It's one of the anyway, point is, if you really want to mess with your mind, look up the double slit experiment. That should just blow everything out of the water. Ask any scientist how that works without using the word magic. 
Moving on, this one's called The Sun and Moon in Washington. Dear Mark, my name is Jay. I'm a listener and a believer. Just curious if you noticed anything interesting about the sun and the moon during your recent trip to Canada. I did not because there was a lot of smoke. I traveled for work and I arrived in Everett, Washington last night. That's I can see Everett from here. And to my surprise and awe, I saw at the moon a glowing pink color, something I've never seen before. This morning I woke to the sun with the same shade of pink. I'm just curious your thoughts on this. I find it fascinating and peculiar. Thoughtfully, Jay Thomas. Uh, forest fires. That's really all there is to it. Hey, there's been a lot of forest fires in both the United States and Canada recently. Although climate change is a myth, uh, you know, there's more fires. And so the atmosphere is being distorted, which doesn't help us much if, we're, if you're trying to view stars or moon stuff. This one's called How Can I Help? Hey, Mark, what's your theory on more land beyond the ice? Cheers. Paul. And yes, I like the idea of more land beyond the ice. I love the thousand-year-old map that supposedly was found in, in Asia somewhere. I think, I can't remember if it was Japan or or deep inside Asia where it showed uh, our AE map and then surrounded by two barriers surrounded by a bunch of continents that weren't land bridged in any way. And they were all about the size of Africa. And it was amazing. It was a really, really cool, um, really cool map. This one's called Flat. Mark, if we left Earth in the late 1960s, the Earth and the atmosphere are spinning, right? So, how did the astronauts not continue spinning when they left Earth orbit? Wouldn't they be launched into space clockwise or counterclockwise from the Earth? NASA thinks we're stupid. <laughs> That's from Ryan. Yeah, he's got a point. And that is, what happens when, you know, the, the inertia, supposedly, if you're if the Earth is traveling at 1,000 miles an hour at the equator, but we'll say pushing 1,000 miles an hour, and the, the rocket gets up to a certain speed, it could be like a curveball, right? You know, if you know baseball, and that is, it's already got <clears throat> kind of a curve going to it. To, so to where the, the rocket's not actually going straight, uh, it wants to move it in, in direction. When when does that rocket break away? When do, when does it break away from Earth, Earth's gravity offic officially? When does the, the spin of the Earth, the Coriolis effect, not affect the rocket anymore? We don't really hear about that. Same thing with ballistics, though. Same thing applies. This one's called Flat Earth Problem to Solve. Hi, Mark. I saw your presentation uh, from the FEIC 2018 in Canada and was hooked on you trying to debate scientists and receiving emails. Two years ago, I started looking into Flat Earth and was into it first until I asked myself a question I couldn't solve. Well, maybe you know a solution. According to the general FE map, the sun moves north of the equator in northern summer and south of it in southern summer. The sun moving in the northern summer gets slower and is closer to the EG uh, to the USA, which makes the days longer. In the southern summer, however, the sun must move faster to make one round in 24 hours, and therefore daylight in the south should be shorter or at least not longer in the winter. Yet, that is not the case. Summer days in the southern part of the world are longer, just as days are longer in the summer uh, of the northern part. Is there an explanation for this fitting FE? Uh, blessings for your work from a skeptic who at least believes in ge into geocentrism. No, I, I don't have a, much of a, a great answer. There's something going on with, there is some advanced stuff that's happening with the lighting. No, no question with the sun and the moon. No question at all, especially when it comes to daylight uh, lengths and especially when it comes to Antarctica. Don't know all the answers. We know, I, all I can tell you is that the lights in the sky are just the lights in the sky. They're not these huge bodies. The moon is not 237,000 miles away. The sun is not 93 million miles away. Uh, they are just lights in the skies. As said in the good book, you know, the sun rules the day and the, the, the moon is just basically night light and all the... Uh, the stars and, and everything you see in the sky is just is a, gi a giant clock system and for signs and wonders type of thing. Don't have an answer for you there. I don't. I wish I did. This one's called, If the Earth Turned, Mark, if the Earth is a globe and it turns a thousand miles an hour, wouldn't this feature, wouldn't this feat, feet be p impossible? Uh, if calculating where to put the net, this tweet is about the guy who jumped from the parachute. If the Earth turns, the globe turns a thousand. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, no different than the the Felix Bumgarner Bumgardner jump from Red Bull, which is if you jump, it, if the Earth is spinning a thousand miles an hour, and you jump uh, you, from a high altitude, where, where does the the gravity not affect you anymore? When does it? What 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 point you get high enough to where the Earth just spins below you and it doesn't carry you with it? it. That's the big question. 
We, we've been asking this for a while now and still can't get a good answer. This one's called Send Throne of God and Link to Coast to Coast Show. Mark, please send the Throne of God paper and links. Thanks and good seeing you at the Washington meetup. And that's from Paul Duckworth. And yep, I sent him the Throne of God and the Coast to Coast interviews. This one's called No Subject. Mark, well done on your Flat Earth Clues interview 170, the Paramania radio debate. Uh, well done. Whether it's a PhD in a lab coat you are debating or whether it's a guy in an English accent, always remember, the Lord has blessed you with testicular fortitude and <laughs> wisdom to <laughs> refute those who bear fal false witness to his creation. Bravo, Brother Mark. Bravo. I like the calm, confident, and manly approach you took in this debate. Stay good and manly when dealing with these people as all that has been concealed will be revealed. You are loved, Robert. Very welcome, Robert. This one's called Throne of God. Hi, Mark. I've been watching your videos for a short time. They are extremely interesting. I was watching one from 2016 with an air traffic controller that had written a paper called The Throne of God. I was wondering if you could send me a copy of Still Available. Thank you, Ronald. Yep, sent him a copy. This one's called... I don't know if I'm going to read this one just because it's it's a little... You know what? No, I'm not even going to read the title. Sorry. I initially skimmed that, but I'm not going to. This is called Ring of Fire Map. Mark, is there a simple Ring of Fire Map laid over the Flat Earth Map? Mostly interested because I have two sons in Hawaii. It could be an interesting overlay map. Stan. Yeah, as a matter of fact, that was one of the first things we did. Um, uh, in fact, Chris Pontius... I'm pretty sure does a, uh, a ring of fire version at flat earth or I think he lays it out where the ring of fire on a flat earth map is very, very interesting. It's not a ring anymore. It's just a line. It's just a line, uh, going down. Uh, it's, it's weird. It's like, it cuts the map in two. It's really way more organic than the, the ring that you see on a Mercator map. So yeah, yeah. Check that out if you get a chance. This one's called. New mind-blowing proof that the Earth is flat from Romania. Hi, I am Christian from, from Romania, and I really admire your work and want to share with you this new mind-blowing information that proves the Earth is flat. Now, you notice I'm not slipping into some sort of Russian accent. That is because his English is quite good. Now, if he starts screwing up his grammar, then I'd slip into it, but I'm not going to. Therefore, you can share it with the world because you have more power than I do, uh, reach more people faster on this topic. To understand the idea of what I want to present, you need to watch this video. Uh, keep in mind that no matter the object at high temperatures, the magnetic repulsion or attraction properties can't manifest because of the heat. This clearly f proves that the sun can't orbit anything, no matter of the earth is flat or round. So this proves that the sun, moon, and other stars are just electromagnetic projections on the earth's dome, something similar to the plasma lap, just different frequency and energy wave. See an example here, another link. Or similar to the old CRT uh, TV, see an example here. The projection can be done from within the dome or from outside. The effect would be the same. Uh, may God love and sustain us with spreading this wonderful revelation. That's from Christian. And yeah, interesting, inter interesting fact, uh, which you can throw at any scientist and they all know this. And that is magnets or magnetic forces lose their power when exposed to heat. So if the earth has this massive magnetic force, let's take the sun out of the equation for a second. We'll just do the earth because supposedly we're on it. So uh, if the earth has this massive magnetic force, which is this spinning magnet, in the in the center uh but isn't it white hot at the center of our of our globe isn't it it's supposed to be you know tons and tons of magma so with intense heat should neutralize the magnetic forces entirely so where is the magnetic force coming from Where, what's happening and if that's the case with ours then it's the same place with all mag with all planetary bodies I mean, we can, you can do this test right now. Seriously, take any, you, and I, I know the videos he's talking about. You can look this up and all you have to do is type in magnets exposed to heat. Magnets will lose power almost immediately when exposed to higher temperatures. So, which is why you, which is why when you're doing magnet stuff, you always want like, um, uh, uh, super conductivity is you, you super chill them. When you super chill them, you can do really, really cool things with magnets. You've probably seen some of those experiments. So anyway, moving on. This one's called Flat Earth. Uh, boy, 
okay, I'm going to try to read this. There's no paragraph breaks, so my eyes are going to get probably a little cross-eyed when I read it. Uh, but it's and I I don't even know if there's a period in this. Um, you know what? I'm not going to read this. <laughs> it's too. There's there's literally. I'm looking through this thing, and there's not a single period in the entire. I'm glad that Eric Landscaper. I'm glad you sent it to me, but you got to. You got to include some more. Well, there are some periods in it. Nah, Matt. Nah, I'm not going to read it. I, I, I read it before and I, it's, it's, it's okay. This is called Please Answer This. Uh, greetings, Mark, from the land not so down under after all, Australia. Which, hey, look at that. It exists. Uh, I've been trying to deprogram my wife from the ball earth concept. I was stumped when she asked in the mix of our discussion as I could not answer her truthfully. Her question was, why doesn't someone just start at a certain point of the ice wall sail or fly around back at the same point? Up until that point in time, I had not questioned why such a simple experiment had not been undertaken or has it? If so, what was the result? If not, why not? It will not alter my view as I'm totally convinced the earth is not a ball spinning in space. However, a simple question such as hers and also the phases of the moon and eclipses are still things I would truly like to understand. I try to glean as much info as I can from people as yourself, Dean Odell, Rob Skiba, Eric Dubay, but till now have been unable to find the answers to these questions. Trust you can help, mate. I heard Rob explain how approachable you were, so I thought I'd go ahead and try to contact you myself. Most things about a non-spinning flat plane Earth I can comprehend with ease, and no one would convince me otherwise. I would like to be explicit with my answers to those who question my reasoning and not um or arg at simple questions to the ones I would like to answer for me. I'm always seeking the truth. I trust you can find the time to reply via email or phone if you have time. Regards, Peter. Um, okay, you know what? I, I will... I will I will email him and tell him I'm going to respond here, which is uh, the first thing is has anyone uh, done it? The first thing is uh, fly you know go go around the ice wall. Supposedly they did it a long time ago, and it took a very very long time. And that was one of the question uh, the things that I I thought would be a great experiment, which is you don't even need two boats. Initially I thought okay two boats you you put one uh, you put them within the shoreline. The po the point is you have to bypass GPS entirely. You can't use P GPS because GPS works for the system. Them, kind of like the matrix thing so you take two boats at let's say the six o'clock position if, if the earth is a clock you know the flat earth is a clock you put them at the six o'clock position and you have one go clockwise one go counterclockwise and they both should meet up at a certain amount of time but if the earth is flat they will never meet up because they're going to run out of fuel they're they're ne it's never going to happen and it, it would take too long and i thought okay there's a faster way to do this and that is if Antarctica is actually the same, roughly the same size and shape as Australia, then you should be able to just take one boat, put it in the six o'clock position, and then just have a plane fly over the boat in either clockwise or, or counterclockwise. And it should be able to come back, should be able to circle Antarctica and come back to that boat in just about, in less than 24 hours, probably 18 hours. Uh, and there are planes out there that can do that without refueling. And again, you have to bypass GPS. Uh, because the, you 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 can't you can't trust it. It's got you've got to go in that one direction. Uh, in fact, you'd even kind of I mean you could kind of pay attention to the compass, but it really be more like you know looking out the, the your window and making sure that Antarctica was on your left or on your right. And that would be a fantastic way to check it out. But the problem is now is that they keep enhancing the Antarctic Treaty from 1959 and you can't do anything down in Antarctica. You can't even do a test like that. They, they don't even like, like, they don't even like boats going, I think, below the 60th parallel uh, unless they're completely authorized by government stuff. So you couldn't do this test on your own. You would have to uh, get uh, part of the and look up the treaty. Some of the there's some fantastic videos. I think I've mirrored a couple of them where they're talking about the, the hoops you have to jump through for the Antarctic Treaty. So that's the first thing. The second thing would be what are you saying? The eclipse. Second thing was uh, simple experiments, uh, simple questions, phases of the moon and the eclipses. Okay, come on, that's easy. And I know, I know, if you're young, you have never been to a planetarium before. Uh, and so when it comes to, you know, the waxing and waning crescents or the, um, uh, the, the blood moon, stuff like that, we, these are, these are things we can do in buildings. We, we've been able to do them since the 1970s in, in domed stadium like structures. So that shouldn't be that hard for you. I said, look, that's just part of the projection system, the sun, the moon, the stars, that's just lights on a ceiling. That part should be easy. 
for for you to grab. Hopefully not. If you don't, if you don't, and I know you're in Australia, and I don't know if you have many planetariums down there. I'm sure you've got one in Sydney or Melbourne and something. Go to a planetarium. Look up in the sky. Make sure you your sky. Look up on the ceiling and make sure your eyes are adjusted and tell me what you see. That's that's how I would answer it. And that should open your eyes to a lot of other things. This one's called Ask the Children. Hi, Mark. Just came across your channel. Thanks again. Thought you might like to explore a new area. Ask the children. And what I mean by this is, for the most part, children are our purest form. They have yet to go through the years and years of conditioning and propaganda to form opinions for them. They still have the opportunity to be seeing the world through new eyes and make their own interpretations of how things work. Pure thoughts based on what they see and what they experience. Ask a nine-year-old to explain star trails around Polaris. They answer uh, and, and thought patterns as they work it out will surprise you. Good luck. That's from Colin. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, we've got children, but... I'm not, we're not going to focus on them. If it happens by accident or by, by chance, yeah, sure, uh, happy to do it. I, one of my, my favorite things from the last couple months was Shane Dawson from the giant YouTube channel Shane, which has 15 million subs, when he made a pro Flat Earth video. And his demographic runs from 12 years old to about 20 years old. And I think it's up towards 18 million hits right now. It was amazing what he did with, with that. I mean, he helped us more with that video with the younger demographic than most of the community has in six months prior, at least. This one's called Flat Earth. Mark, I have positive proof the Earth is flat. It can be seen and tested most anywhere on the Earth. You don't need to travel to a certain spot, nor do you need any special equipment. It can be demonstrated indoors with very little equipment. This will cause a firestorm. Here we go. Ready? Here's the cliffhanger. If you're interested, then call this number or email Rocky Russell. <sighs> Sorry. Again, you guys know my pet peeves. No cliffhangers. Tell me your idea. Don't give me... Again, I get a lot of emails. You should know by now. It's, it's like, okay, I understand you want to start a dialogue. Don't bait me with that. Give me your idea, and if I like it, I'm going to call you. Say, hey, this is really cool. You want to talk about it? I might even have you on Strange World. Don't cliffhanger me. Not to be confused with the Sylvester Stallone 90s movie, Cliffhanger. This one's called Greetings from Sweden. Uh, Meetup Survival Guide. Thanks. Hello, Mark. Feel free to read this on air. I hope you have time for this email somewhere. I love your work. Keep it up. Short version. I would like to arrange a meetup in Sweden. Uh, long version. I've been researching Flat Earth for two years to pr prove my friend wrong. I still haven't succeeded. He showed me the interview with Dave Murphy on late night Macedonian television. When I finally, and I was supposed to do that, by the way, they never followed up. They called me and said, yeah, we want to have you on after Dave. And then some producer got bent out of shape, I think. When I finally got convinced that he was right, my life turned around 180 degrees. I got depressed. I couldn't meet people and stopped going to work. Things got kind of bad and I left everything without anything but my car and what I was wearing at the time. It took me five weeks to get my mind together and finally returned home. I had a new kind of energy now. I met my soulmate, and we have a wonderful daughter. I really enjoyed living again. I think more people need this kind of energy. So I really like to share my story with others. I've been breaking the first rule of flat club regularly, and although most of the time talked about it with anonymous chats with the people uh, zero to 10 kilometers around my location. The problem with these is that uh, there's a lot of trolls and improper comments. I've not yet convinced my girlfriend that I'm right, although I think she soon will be. I've also talked about it with my mom and grandma, who both uh, just laughed and thought it was a joke. Now they know I'm serious anyway. My big passion for this is hard for me to handle. I do or do not when I do or do not talk about the truth. I really need more people to talk on the subject, but I have a hard time trying to find them. I would love if anyone listening from Sweden would send me an email to this address. And the email address is called fe meet Sweden. That's fe meet Sweden at gmail.com. Just to have someone to exchange ideas over email on our native language. My hope with this is that there are many Swedes listening to this and we can arrange a meetup. Sincerely, Johans Bjork. The O like I and girl. Bjork. Uh, B -I -B really? The O is like an I and girl. Earl Bjork. Yeah. P.S. I'd love a copy of your survival guide. So, yep, I sent him an email and, and tried to help best I could. 
Uh, let's see. I'm not going to... Well, this one's called Nibiru, Nibiru to Sleep. Hi, Mark. So I guess now that we've established that the firmament is covering, covering the Earth and the Earth is flat, so if we can't get out, Nibiru can't get in. Yay! He gets it. Yep. Or affect the Earth because there's nothing else out there. Does that mean l seem like a reasonable conclusion? Penny for your thoughts. Thank you, Eric. Yep. Absolutely right. There, you don't have anything to worry about. There is no meteor that's going to wipe us out. Now, there may be, may be some fireworks in the sky. No question. There may be some, some flashy stuff that happens, but you don't have to worry about another solar system slamming into ours. All right. That's just, it's just space programming and pretty good one at that. I, I will say this out of all the NASA and all the space programming they've given us, you know, whether it's the face on Mars, or the hexagram on Saturn or the the asteroids, you know, smashing into Jupiter and Pluto, a planet anymore and all that stuff. The one that was interesting was the little dark conspiracy story about Nibiru, how they, uh, they, they're, that we're part of a binary star system. Nibiru is going to crash into us. Well, there were some people who said it was going to happen in 2011 and then 2012. And, you know, again, remember it's 2018, you know, we're, we're deep into 2018. Nothing's happened. Nothing. So if, if I'm sorry, if, if Nibiru shows up in the sky now and you know, mainstream media, first of all, if it's mainstream media, you're going to have to be suspect of it anyway. But if it shows up now and media starts talking about it, the first thing would be like, um, so where have you been for the last five years? Nobody's that off in their calculations. Five years and nobody sees anything. Come on. This one's called test email. Uh, Mark, here's the file on the Ark of the Sun. I've been trying to get Rob Skiba to respond to my emails and phone calls. That's from Rocky. Yep. This one's called Good Evidence in Indiana. Uh, hello, Mark. Mike here. You can share my name. I don't mind. I'm a proud flat earther. My family hates me over this. They won't even bat an eye at it. None of them. They think I'm crazy now. Great presentation at the Canada Conference. Thank you. I took vacation last week and spent the majority of my time glued to the couch watching all the new uploads. Anyway, the reason I emailed you is this. I was in the conversation with a coworker of mine earlier. We do wireless communications. Anyhow, he brought up that our 5 gigahertz backhaul link from the Liberty, Indiana to Richmond seems seen one of the access points on our tower in Anderson, Indiana. Liberty is 350 feet and Anderson is 450 feet elevation. He said upper atmosphere was the reason for seeing the access point. I said it must be bouncing off the ground first. Then there was a short pause and I laughed and I said, seriously, he knows I'm a flat guy. He laughs. And that was the end of the topic. Shortly after our conversation ended, I proceeded to do some looking. 62 miles is the exact distance as the crow flies. Not sure of your knowledge of wireless radio equipment. Bob from Globusters knows you don't get signal without at least close to the line of sight. Curve calculation shows over 2,000 feet of curvature. Last message I sent my coworker said, you better hope it's the atmosphere. I sent him these photos. He had no response. Sounds familiar to a story I heard you tell recently. I'd love to be on your TFR show sometime. Do something out of the ordinary and call me. Oh, that's nice. And I might. And he shows me the uh, uh, the map on his cell phone. And yeah, yeah, two thousand feet of curvature, and he's and he's getting he's getting message. Yeah, accurate calculate. Yeah, it's good stuff. Wow, thanks for that. This one's called Hello. Mark, I hope you are well. I can't say as much for me. Not that I'm doing bad. It's just difficult awakening to move forward from, especially in my situation. I have no resources or means to take care of myself and my son as to follow my heart and passion. Sending him to school this coming week was so hard. I didn't expect an answer. I don't expect an answer, but I will reach out again soon. It's just conf comforting to vent to someone I know who understands. Take good care. Have something I have to deal with why I'm cutting this email short. Lucky you because I was about to unload. Ha ha. Talk soon, Jay. I don't know. I I don't know if this has anything to do with Flat Earth. Uh, or anything like that. So I I don't. I don't. I don't have really a response for this. I mean, you don't. First off, they never. Yeah. You know what? Let's move on. 
This one's called, I don't know if that's, you know, there are some good troll, most of the, the, the troll emails are terrible. And I'll, I read those from time to time. But every once in a while, I'll get one that just confuses me. It's like, uh, you know, I write back. It's like, do I know you? Do I, we, this one's called The Delivery Drivers. Mark, did you get a chance to watch the movie at all? I know you're super busy and working on bigger things. I just feel that the movie might be useful to those out there with similar issues and becoming aware of the deception on a mass scale, the entire Antarctica and all the clues and questions. It can be overwhelming and complicated to know that we don't know why things are a certain way and to know certain things do not make sense with the deception telling us otherwise so deep and rejecting any free thought and question asking and not being laughed at. I listened to your interview and that wanker Russell Brent in England, Katie, Katie uh, Perry's ex. He was so jokey and distracting in the interview. Well, that is his job. Remember, he's a stand-up comic by trade. Uh, in the interview, ta talking over you and acting like a child, he could not handle the truth. Most can't. The uh, then going off the norm uh, away from the herd is scary. To go into new territory and lift up the blanket and see the truth, not uh, the false narrative given, is the only is only done by a few. I give hug marks to you. Hug marks. I think he meant to say hugs mark or whatever to you for being so dedicated and active i'm sure you have been suffering and uh grouse around you are taking on negative fear emotions from others being in the minority up against the machine is not a small task there has to be more than videos and books and try to lead people to the water trough to drink truth or at least test truth the debate is like russell brand the uk wanker <laughs> By the way, this guy's got to be from, from Britain because they, they're the only ones that say wanker. Uh, so many think they are so smart and creative and awake being lied to their core. Long email, sorry, lots of emotion and thoughts, much work to do. If you do not think the movie would be useful for exploration or debate, that is okay. Take care and I wish you much wellness and strength and good fortune and health to seek truth and reveal to others the topic of flat earth. Sincerely, Jonathan. And yeah, I did watch it and I, I, I do try to share it with others. I don't mirror everything on my channel for obvious reasons. I mean, I already have 1300 videos on my channel and it's getting a little unwieldy. I'm not going to start pruning things yet though. I, we'll see. This one's called Hello. Hi, Mark, you have changed my life for the better, and I don't know how I could ever thank you except the courage to start doing what you do in one way or another. I look at the world differently. These days, I'm happier because I see the sun, moon, clouds, my sons as such an unbelievable, beautiful creation for me. Your speech on YouTube was, again, life-changing. Courage, courage and inspiring. I live in Minnesota. I'd love to connect with some people and figure out how better to spread the awareness. Please let me know if you have any ideas on this. Thank you, Mark. Best regards... Sean. All right, I will let him know. There's stuff happening in his area. Oh, wow, we're, we're coming up on that time, so I got to figure out which one I'm going to end on. This one's called Flat Earth Memes. Heads up, Mark. All Flat Earth Memes are being deleted on Facebook right now by after anybody likes. And that's by Pat Pedra. And I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's true, because there's a lot of Flat Earth memes out there that being, I mean, even PewDiePie is encouraging Flat Earth memes, and I don't think they're going to start, I mean, he would take notice, and a lot of other big channels would too, so it, it, let me know. If anyone's out there, they, they find that Flat Earth memes are getting wiped out, please let me know. This one's called, hello, Mark. Mark, I can't imagine this email is still active. It is. It's, the, it's my same email I've had for 20-something years. I say this because of how much hate people spew when their beliefs are challenged. Yeah, but they don't email me. Very few trolls are... You gotta know something about trolls. They, the, their, whole, their biggest weapon is them being anonymous. And by that, I mean, yeah, you can be anonymous and you can be in YouTube chat and, and comments. But if you're going to troll somebody with an email, you gotta create a fake email account. And trolls are just lazy. The star. I mean, you can spoof an email account in, in 60 seconds on Gmail. Just create a, a brand new e Gmail account and you could shoot me an email and say, I hate you. You suck. But they don't. They're just lazy. And phone calls almost never happen. I mean, my phone sits there. My phone number is it's real phone number. I'm staring at my cell phone. It sits down there and it rings a lot. And But it's always good. It's always good stuff. It's never trolls saying, you know, you're an awful person. I'm going to kill you. Besides, why would they come after me anyway? Anyway, let's finish off the email. Uh, anyway, if this is somehow active, I want to discuss a couple of situations that exist that are never addressed on either side. They are magicians and do a damn good job of keeping the masses enthralled. 
I can't dis- okay, here we go. I can't discuss this topic with anyone I know. It's like being gay in the closet in the 1950s. They aren't ready for the truth. I am. I've been for a long time now. And that's from DL. And again, no cliffhangers. If don't email me and say, "Oh, I've got this great idea for you," but you got to email me to find out. It's like, no, just just tell me what's on your mind. You know, unless it's some sort of trademark secret, like you found the replacement for gasoline, which wouldn't be something. Uh, this one's called a test for globe earth versus flat earth. Mark, I enjoy your vids. I've known something was wrong my whole life. An easy test. See, this guy's got a test. If the earth is a globe, then it would be easy to measure how, uh, or if tall buildings were leaning away from each other. Just pick any two buildings in a big city, New York, Chicago, with several miles between each building. Make sure each building is, is plumb. Yeah, I know where you're going with this. Uh, not leaning in any direction and aligned to the center of the earth. Then measure the distance between the different floors of the buildings. If earth is round, the buildings will grow in distance the further you measure the higher one goes up. Easy. Again, great info uh, from all in the movement. And that's from Chris uh, from Kentucky. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we should actually do more of a test. It's a tricky test to do though. You've, you've got to be able to, you've got to, you know, to get buildings that are miles away and you've got to be able to pinpoint, uh, you've got to, uh, it's tough. It's a tough test. I, uh, objectively from the outside, great test. Trying to do it in a practical sense, difficult. Water is way easier. Uh, this one's called Archer. Mark, I finally got around to watching Archer. It is funny as hell. That's from Rob. Yep, absolutely right. Greatest animated show I think that was ever done. And it was done, the only reason that show was even made was because a, a lot of different people, or a lot of different shows came before it. It's called Archer. You can look, I think it's on FX. I, they're going to wrap up their last season here pretty soon. I think they've done eight seasons now. It's funny, funny, funny stuff. Uh, not exactly for the kids. And uh, are we going to end on that one? Now let's read one more. This one's called Real Life Viewing. Hello, Mark. I have a thought that I have a thought that may be an interest to you or someone you may know. I also believe the earth would be flat, or at least so to speak. I am seeing stuff in the Bible that is different than the standard flatter stuff as well that makes me trod down the path. I know that all the pictures of the globe, earth, and space we see are composite images, but there is one telescope that you can see many things much better in. The reverse binocular telescopes made by J... M J M I J M J M I are not computer images, and I do do believe someone who studies astronomy in connection with flat Earth would find this very valuable. They are beyond my affordability, but a large group might find this handy for research and being able to give better light on the subject that the Earth is flat. Part of my reason for my curiosity is that three times I've been shooting stars. Uh, come close to me. Two times they were fireballs that were about the size of a basketball and flew within 20 feet of me. What? Yeah, with the odds are there. And a friend, uh, and once the size of a car that disappeared in the bush near my house. Did you see it land? It, I mean, we, you know how rare it is to even find video of anybody with a, with a meteor or anything crashing? Uh, as I was driving at night, but I never found it. Uh, let's see if you never found it. Here's the link for the site where you can get the telescopes. Oh, and it's also interesting to note that NASA has bought two of the telescopes and they're supposed to buy 12, but had a cutback. So they ended up not buying them. I wonder if they uh, showed too much and that, and you can go to I am J I M S mobile.com buy. they're called reverse binocular telescopes. So hang on. J M I and the company's J M. J Jim's mobile.com by yeah look up reverse binoculars you know what we'll end on that one because it's kind of strange and I've never even heard of such a thing of a reverse binocular telescope it's like reverse vampires what does it even mean somebody look that up and how expensive these things are I don't think the flyers community is going to be buying one but you never know anyway guys thank you for everybody that wrote in uh, on this Sunday or before this Sunday and uh, everyone that's going to write in in the future. Remember my email address you can send this, these questions to is msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net. Until next time, guys, stay flat.